So relaxation. Now, now, we've spoken about the stress of our days. What we actually need to begin to think about, and, and, and you'll, you'll probably recognize some of this from the slow food movement. What I'm encouraging everyone to begin to do is to see food in a reverential way and then to plan specific times within which to eat it. Uh, but that's not the only component. What we want to do is find a way for your body to metabolize nu nutrients more effectively. And I, I wanna, I'm going to digress here for a second because I want to talk about the ability of the body to use, to digest and absorb nutrients. And I deal with a lot of folks who have this particular problem. Um, so many people who are trying to lose weight will, let, let's say, will have constipation or diarrhea. Uh, many folks will have acid indigestion, or what we call acid indigestion, gas and bloating. And I don't just see it in people trying to lose weight. I see it in many of my patients. Uh, what we do then is we actually look at how the body digests very often, and I see this in many people who have weight as an issue, your stomach acid, what we think of as reflux, is actually low stomach acid, not high. Con um, and I'm not saying anything about conventional doctors, but Dr. Wright has written extensively about low stomach acid and absorption. And what I see in many people is that low stomach acid will actually cause them to eat more while they're seeking the nutrition they're not getting from the food. You should actually have a pH of two in your stomach. It's a very strong acid. It would digest many things in the room. It's an organic acid. And what protects us is we have a mucosal lining that protects us. And, and an ulcer is an invasion of that lining. So many people actually have low stomach acid, not high, causing them to not absorb nutrients very effectively. Then they'll seek out foods that help replenish that. So this is what I'm talking about here. Yes, sir. <laughs> this is new to us, I will say. We're used to keeping the conversation going. When you say low stomach acid, you're talking about a low pH, not low in quantity of acid. In no, the I sh you're, thank you for helping me clarify. I'm actually meaning uh, low in quantity. The pH should be a two. It's a very strong acid. What happens in situations where there is not enough acid is that it actually, you won't have enough, uh, the pH will rise. It will become more, more neutral because of the other stomach acids. You need a, a pH of two in order to break down the peptides that digest the protein in, in, the, in the digestive tract. And so then when, when the pH is two, what it does, the hormones actually trigger the release of digestive enzymes from the pancreas and then the release of bile from the gallbladder if you still have it. And so by, by doing that, then it helps you break down the nutrients more effectively and they pass into the intestines and are, are more easily absorbed. So we see that all the time and we, we put people on hydrochloric acid with digestive enzymes. It's not just something I recommend you go do because there have been a few people that have actually had high stomach acid. So, but it's rare. I mostly see low stomach acid or neutral and there are ways to approach this uh, effectively. But if your stomach acid is low and weight is a problem, it may be that you're seeking nutrients you can't absorb. And I've had patients after doing all the diets, we do the hydrochloric acid and they lose weight. And, and many people will go to that specifically. Not only that, they find their appetite reduces, they find they feel better, they have other problems go away, let's say uh, aches and pains. Um, Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Devona is going to get some exercise tonight. <laughs> um, are you going to cover what kinds of foods that you can eat to um, to get back to a balance of more stomach acid, or is it just something that you have to take as a supplement? Uh, 
so far, I, I haven't had many people actually improve their stomach acid, but as you have improved your overall health, some people do regain their, their, their digestive ability. Um, there are things that you can use, let's say lemon juice, vinegar, and I find many people who crave those things actually do have low stomach acid. Um, and uh, bitters, there are forms of things that are, are helpful. You know, some of the old naturopathic cures, that type of thing. Um, here's the hard part is because the HCL is so, uh, so acidic, you can't swallow it. So we can't actually swallow anything at the height that the pH that you need. The, the capsules that people take are actually coated in beet. And uh, there are some things that can help improve the alkalinity, acidity of the body. But um, we need this to be alkaline. We need other, excuse me, acidic. We need other parts to be alkaline. Um, are there specific things you have in mind? Or? No, I just know that I have low stomach acid. Like when I take the pills, it's amazing. But I don't want to live on the supplements just to eat. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering if there's something else that I can do besides taking just the supplements. If I can ask, how many do you take on an average meal? Um, I am good. I feel amazing when I take two. Okay. But three is too much. Okay. Three, okay. I get an upset stomach, but two is just perfect. Let me explain what she's talking about. She, she's either, either worked with a naturopath or a holistic MD who is assessed for stomach acid. Sometimes you can do this just therapeutically. I feel it's better to assess because you have that proof. Uh, really fun, we do it just over here. You swallow a capsule, we take it back out, and, um, and it gives us telemetry. It actually gives us a, us a reading like, a, like an EKG, and it'll tell us whether your stomach is producing acid, and then you do a bicarb challenge. Mm -hmm. And I had a patient today who failed every challenge, so definitely low stomach acid, but it makes a difference. And this is what's really important about absorption and nutrients and what we're talking about, the ability to absorb these nutrients. And I'm gonna give you some evidence a little bit later about how, how some of our activities actually do impact our absorption. But um, when you can't absorb nutrients, let's say it's low, um, you get things like hair loss, poor nails, women come in all the time telling me their nails are breaking. Um, ridges in the nails, malabsorption in many cases. Um, and hair loss is really devastating to many women, men too, but you know we don't necessarily want to be bald. So um, um, uh, how you absorb and use, your, use hormones, other nutrients, anemia, low iron, low calcium, uh, osteoporosis, so there are about 20 uh, different nutrients that require a low enough stomach acid, I mean pH, low enough so that they can absorb, so that these nutrients can be absorbed. And if they're not, that affects your overall health. Really and truly, the, um, I'm talking broader than diet. I'm talking about your health to help you absorb nutrition more effectively. And if you're not absorbing, under situations where you're allowing the body to relax, it even affects your central nervous system. Uh, we have the autonomic nervous system that affects our ability uh, to um, either uh, be aroused, the sympathetic, or the parasympathetic, that which relaxes us. And so these affect our ability to burn and use calories. Um, I wanna teach you a couple of things to help you in a stressful situation. You may already know these, but I wanna first have everybody just kind of sit relaxed. Don't worry, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to have a partner. <laughs> and just breathe, just breathe deeply. Just inhale and then exhale and kind of feel it just releasing from the body. You can often just get into a more sympathetic state by inhaling and exhale. Just do that again with me, just breathe and exhale and and that can be a very relaxing activity another thing you can do is if you're feeling particularly tense just actually tense the whole body just just 
basically, you know, as if you were, you were exercising, and then just relax. And that can often take the tension out of the body. And the last thing that I really like when I'm working is you take your hands, cup them over your eyes, but leave your eyes open, just like this. And just that darkened space will help relax the sympathetic nervous system, take you more parasympathetic. Another, and just, you know, it may, it may be embarrassing to do that, but you can also, for a few minutes at work, if you can get away with it, you can uncover your eyes now. <laughs> um, you can also turn off the lights in your office. Um, I do that sometimes with patients if we need to relax. I don't mean it's dark in there. We have other low lights in there. I like mood lighting, yeah. So you, everybody relaxes. It's why, you know, you sometimes don't want to put down the lights when you're doing speaking because everyone goes to sleep. <laughs> Hopefully it's not the speaker. So, so what I'm talking about is, is something that it sounds simple, relax, but has great implication in how your body actually absorbs and uses nutrients. Um, let's talk about quality for a minute. I mean, there, I could talk forever on each topic. And I like this quote, the, the discovery of a new dish is more for the happiness of mankind than the discovery of a new star. <laughs> How many of us love to look at uh, recipes and um, you know, see what we can do